Hello, I'm Tony Dow. You know, uh, being on this set reminds me of the days when I was a teenager and played Wally Cleaver and Leave It to Beaver. You know, the uh, Cleavers lived in a pretty nice world. Well, we had some real problems, but uh, they were manageable if you just applied the right principles. Remember? Sometimes when a person's made a mistake or done something wrong, that's the time when they need understanding the most. You fellows remember that, huh? Okay, Dad. If only things were that simple. Since those days, I've learned a lot by traveling the winding roads of life. For example, I've learned that mental disorders can appear without warning in me or in my loved ones. They can happen no matter how good a person you are or how well you follow the standard common sense rules of living. You or someone you love may have one of the most puzzling mental disorders, manic depression. What is manic depression? Well, imagine a person has two pair of glasses. One pair turns the world into a marvelous kaleidoscope of high energy and excitement. A person wearing these glasses can feel great for a while. The world is a kaleidoscope full of colors and exquisite sensations. This is the manic state, and the person experiencing it feels energetic and highly creative. Sleep is an unnecessary luxury. A mild manic state can even be pleasurable and exciting to the person experiencing it, but not necessarily to family and friends. Now, suddenly, the same person notices that the kaleidoscope glasses have turned dark. Without warning, the world becomes a sad and hopeless place. This is the depressive state. The colors have all turned to gray. It's hard to get out of bed and nearly impossible to function at work. You read without understanding and begin to think morbid thoughts of death. People who suffer from manic depressive illness don't want to experience this roller coaster of emotions, which are as different as opposite poles of a magnet. In fact, the clinical name for manic depressive illness is bipolar disorder. If you or someone you know suffers from a type of manic depression, you'll want to understand more about this disease. Everyone goes through mood swings, feeling joyful or blue. It's part of life. But the moods associated with manic depressive disorders are extreme. The Chinese say that to conquer the beast, one must first make it a friend. So let's begin by understanding the various symptoms of manic depressive disorders. One of the first symptoms of manic depressive illness, especially when someone's manic or hypomanic, is that they lose insight. Their ability to monitor their own behavior is uh, unfortunately impaired. It was kind of like I was invincible. You know, I had no worries. I could do anything and with very little sleep. And uh, nothing really affected me. And um, my moral behavior was based on um, lack of consequences. I couldn't read a paragraph and remember what it said. I couldn't. Uh, I had such racing thoughts, I couldn't um, talk coherently, I couldn't remember stuff. What I felt first was a great craving for activity, just uh, a drive uh, to be involved in a great many things. You could do this, you could do that, you could create this, paint this, write this. Um, there's just endless possibilities in mania. It's all there, and you need it all, and you need to capture it all, but there's, it's impossible. You can't. You've taken all these avenues, but you're alone because no one believes you. They think you're absolutely out of your mind. Periods of mania um, are characterized by uh, changes in mood that include um, feeling euphoric, feeling extremely happy, happier than you ought to, feeling expansive, uh, feeling elated, but also uh, along with that there is often profound irritability. He was destructive with, with, with property more than physical violence to people. There were holes in the wall, 
There were broken chandeliers. There is often a, a substantial thinking disturbance when people are manic. They are not able to process um, thinking, uh, think logically uh, like they would normally do on a day-to-day -day basis. Most of my mania was centered on a grandiose idea that I could save the world and that I could save mentally ill people from their suffering by becoming president of the United States. Other symptoms include uh, not needing much sleep or, or a reduced need for sleep. Um, so it can, for instance, somebody who, ha who normally would require eight hours of sleep maybe only gets two hours of sleep, but they feel totally fine, totally energized the next day. Before I got treatment, I laid under my desk for 12 hours with my door shut and cried in a ball one afternoon. I was living in this little closet in an attic of a big house in college, and I would sleep all the time and pretend like I wasn't even in that room. So people would knock on my door all the time, and they didn't even know I was there. I really dropped off the face of the earth for four years because I was, if I wasn't working, I was exhausted and trying to get ready for the next day. After a while, I just found myself unable to go to work. I found myself unable to get out of bed, and so I just didn't go to work. They lose interest in normal activities. They don't feel motivated. They feel very bad about themselves. Uh, their energy's low. They want to sleep, but they can't, or else they sleep too much. I slept all the time. Um, I was able to eat a little bit, um, but I was just very lethargic. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't make it to class. I, um, I, was, I was agitated when I would wake up, but yet then I was able to go back to sleep. But as the symptoms changed, they manifested themselves in different ways. The latter stage of my depression, I could not eat at all. I had no appetite. I was rapidly losing weight. They either eat too little or they eat too much. And then they can start to feel so bad about themselves or be in so much pain that they start to think that they would be better off dead or they actually uh, think about killing themselves. The worst point was the constant, repeated obsession with death. Um, I have a deal with my doctor that he'll never let me get that sick again because he and I both know that I won't live through it because I, I can't ever go there again. Uh, the dark places that I go are so bad that I just can't be there again. Manic periods can be mild in severity and those are called hypomanic periods. And those periods are typically characterized by mild feelings of euphoria, mild periods of increased energy and activity, may be accompanied by brief periods of racing thoughts and decreased need for sleep, but they typically are not severely disruptive to an individual's ability to work or interact uh, with loved ones, uh, social interactions, etc. Beyond hypomania or mild mania, however, are much more severe stages of mania. Classically, periods of depression alternate with periods of mania, but also you can actually have depressive symptoms and manic symptoms at the same time. And that's why the illness is sometimes difficult to diagnose. That state, called a mixed state, is a particularly uh, unpleasant state for people to be in because they not only have the symptoms of agitation, racing thoughts, increased energy associated with mania, but they feel particularly dysphoric or depressed at the same time. It can also present with very, very rapid mood swings where somebody may be manic one day and depressed the next, and then manic and then depressed, and it can vary like that over days, over weeks. These cycles of um, activity and depression were beginning to come closer together, and they were getting more intense. People may have big depressions, but tiny highs. We call that condition bipolar type 2 disorder. We're now learning that that may actually be the most common form of manic depressive illness. In particularly severe forms of mania, individuals can have not only the classic symptoms of mania, but can actually lose touch with reality. They may have what we call psychotic symptoms. Their thinking may, may become so affected that they suffer from delusions, false beliefs. Uh, it would be like standing on the shore one moment, and the next uh, instant you found yourself hundreds of yards out in the water. I mean, you were just swept away. Um, and I think that once this feeling of being swept away 
uh, had occurred, then you wanted to stay where you were, no matter how much peril you might be in. Several of our patients have mentioned the elation they experienced in the manic state. They thought their minds worked better and they were more creative. This is one of the seductive aspects of manic depressive illness. This aspect of high creativity becomes part of the patient's personality, one which they often treasure highly. So seeking treatment may represent giving up a unique piece of themselves. But treatment is absolutely necessary for the individual and our society. You know, more than 17 million Americans suffer from some form of these diseases each year. The financial costs range from hospitalization to lost economic opportunities with the annual cost of depression alone pegged at $43 billion a year. But of course, the biggest costs are in human lives and fractured families. Some 60 to 80 percent of all adolescents who commit suicide have a history of depression or manic depression. In fact, about 15 percent of all patients with bipolar disorders end their lives in suicide. It's an immense tragedy because depressive and manic depressive illnesses are among the most treatable of all diseases. There's much we don't know yet about the causes of depression and manic depression, but we do know this. They result from a chemical imbalance in the brain. So the next logical question is, why is there an imbalance? Two factors seem to determine a predisposition to depression and manic depression genetics and periods of extreme crisis, grieving or financial strain. We know that manic depressive illness is a disorder of brain functioning. We know that it is a highly heritable disorder. We know that it is recurrent in the vast majority of people with the illness. And we know that medicines help prevent those recurrences. Without treatment, 15 percent of people with this illness will die by suicide. In other words, this is a lethal illness. There's some evidence that, especially early on in the illness, that stressful life events do tend to be associated with the triggering of a manic or depressive illness. But most of the available research suggests that after the illness has declared itself and has gone on for some time, that people can be vulnerable to recurrences of manic or depressive episodes even if there don't appear to be obvious stressful events in their lives. That makes it particularly critical to make sure that people stay on medicines and stay in treatment, even during a period when it seems like everything is going reasonably well in their lives. Manic depressive illness really is an illness. and It doesn't represent a character flaw or punishment for living badly. It's there because of a chemical imbalance in the brain and that's something we're just starting to learn about now. So if it's an illness, there must be a cure, right? Well, in the ideal world of Wally Cleaver, that may have been true, but in real life, we like to talk about treatments rather than cures. And the first step to treatment is to recognize that there is a problem. And in the early stages, that's something that uh, usually is more obvious to friends and family than the person experiencing the manic depressive illness. Lewis, I can't believe this. So you don't think this is a problem? Spending $2,000 on books in two days? Problems where? What? If you could only see these, these connections, you wouldn't question me. I read, I understand. You Lewis, listen to me. Something's not right here. Kelly called from the office today and was very concerned. She says you couldn't concentrate and it's affecting your performance. Work. Work, there's more to life than work. It's a play on words. <laughs> I'll be fine. I am fine. Fine as wine. And all this after moping around for two months. You could hardly move two weeks ago. Besides, how are we going to pay these bills? Bills, we always do pay them. You worry too much about petty things. I've had it with these, these questions and this, this lack of trust. You see, Lewis is in denial. When he's in his manic phase like this, he loses objectivity about his own behavior. And when he's in a depressive phase, even getting up in the morning is a painful chore. And the idea of calling a doctor simply seems too much to expect. But without treatment, it's likely Lewis will get worse. 
The mania will probably escalate until he's out of control, and the depression may lead him to reoccurring thoughts of suicide. Part of the hope comes from ongoing support from family and friends who offer loving and consistent encouragement. If you think a friend or family member has manic depression, here's what you can do. First, let them know that you really care. Don't judge them as inadequate or evil. Second, encourage your friend to get professional help. The first step may be for your friend to talk with a family doctor, or a school counselor, social worker, or a psychologist at a community health center. Third, don't take responsibility for making your friend well or keeping the manic depression a secret. This particular secret could cost them their life. Fourth, learn as much as you can about manic depressive illness so you can be a reliable source of information when they're not thinking clearly. And finally, stand by them in recovery and ongoing treatment. Be optimistic that treatment will be successful. Bipolar disorder is a family illness. It's, yes, it's an illness that can affect an individual, but it will also affect um, the other people living with that individual. It's very important to get loved ones, significant others involved because they can be um, a good person for that individual with manic depressive illness to bounce uh, ideas off of, of what their symptoms were. That person can help remind them of what their symptoms were and also can help warn them when those symptoms start to come back. As we have lived with this illness through the years, um, Andy depends on me uh, a lot to help him to spot what's what's going on. Andy has a very strong personality and he's very smart and um, sometimes I would even kind of question myself, well maybe this is just a temporary thing, but I had to be very strong and, and know that this was not the person that I knew and that he really did need help and I had to pursue that no matter what it took. I was mean to both my mother and father but they always stuck by me no matter what, and tried to help in any way, sent me to doctors and stuff, and they were always there for me when I was in the hospital. Uh, it's important to be supported, even if at, at a particular time the support is not appreciated. It's important to be, to be supported, and um, um, things do get better. We're, I think we're just so fortunate that this is an illness that's treatable. When looking for a doctor, get a referral for one who's experienced in treating manic depressive disorders who's up to date on the latest medications and understands the importance of monitoring your progress. Manic depressive illness is one of the most treatable diseases. From 80 to 90 percent of those who seek treatment see a significant decrease in symptoms and an increase in quality of life. In other words, treatment is essential to manage your illness. But first, you need to learn all you can about treatment especially medications. Treatment of manic depressive illness includes, as a cornerstone of treatment, medications for uh, mood stabilization, to treat acute manic or depressive episodes and then to prevent the recurrence of those episodes. We have many medications that clearly work. Um, there are many medications on the horizon. It's, we, it's not just that we have one medication anymore. We have a number of medications that work. It may take time to find the best medicines. It may take time to let the medications work. But more often than not, in the vast majority of cases, we can get people well. The treatment for the mania just put me where I should be. Um, it's given me back a normal life. When the medications um, that I took finally started working, um, there was a light that went on and my head was clear enough that I could finally make plans for myself in my future. There's never been a better time in the history of medicine to um, have more hope about treatment options available. When can you quit taking your medication? Well, the good news is that there is medication. The not so good news is that manic depressive illness is a chronic disease. Chances are you'll always need medication. It's kind of like your eyes. If they don't focus right, you have to apply some sort of correction, either glasses or contacts. Different people need different prescriptions, but they all have the chronic problem of less than perfect vision. But you know what? The glasses you get with treatment are much better than the dark glasses and kaleidoscopes you wear with untreated manic depression. No one likes the idea of depending upon drugs, though, especially after you begin to feel better. And that's why too many people discontinue their treatment 
and fall into a dangerous relapse. Non-compliance rates for people who are supposed to be taking blood pressure medicine are as high as 50 percent. Those numbers are unfortunately also true for people with manic depressive illness. Compliance is something that friends need to be really diligent about, friends and family. Non-compliance pretty much equals relapse. If you had an ulcer or you had diabetes, you would do what the doctor said. And why is this medication any different? Because it's the central nervous system. Of course you should take it. Two or three times I decided to stop the medication because I was feeling better. And as I think almost anybody, no matter what condition you have, if you feel like you can live by yourself without medications, you don't need to take them. I had that attitude, I stopped and I'd go into a mania or a depression. So the medications were the, the primary reason why I could see clearly enough to make my life what I wanted it to be. People with bipolar disorder who have the illness treated have lifespans as long as people without the illness. People who suffer from manic depression may not be able to change the chemical imbalance in their brains, but they can take responsibility for their own treatment programs and their families can help. The first goal is to continue treatment and that includes medication and therapy. It's easy to forget to take medicine, either accidentally or on purpose. So many patients put it someplace where they can't miss it, like by the toothpaste. Watch for the signs of reoccurring mania or depression in yourself or in someone who has been diagnosed with the illness. People who have lived with manic depression can be skillful in hiding its symptoms, even from themselves. Manic depression can be especially difficult to identify because inward suffering can come out as anger, combative, or erratic behavior. These are not behaviors people tend to associate with depression. Keeping a journal may help you describe your thoughts, feelings, and behavior. Use words and drawings to express yourself. A specific kind of journal called a mood journal can help you understand the overall cycles of mania and depression. Each day you track your overall mood and make a chart. Then over the course of a few weeks or months, you may be able to visibly see your personal trends. This kind of self-education is important and may give you insight into managing your illness. One of the most important things you can do is prepare for periods when a relapse occurs and do it when you feel well. Talk with your therapist, develop a plan should you become suicidal. Write down the warning signals and keep them handy for yourself and share them with your family. In your manic state, you may behave in a reckless manner. Even trained police officers may believe you're drunk or on drugs. Now, there are many cases where people with manic depression were arrested or jailed because they seemed high or because they actually did commit crimes when they were not in their right mind. When you're manic, you're particularly vulnerable to ideas you would never consider in a normal state. Choose a time when you're feeling well and talk with a few trusted friends to design a plan which will protect you during these periods. You can't avoid stress, but do what you can to handle it. You may want to listen to tapes that help you relax as you consider challenges facing you. Exercise is a proven stress reducer. If running isn't your cup of tea, try aerobics or biking or simply walking. You'll probably need to develop new strategies for handling problems. Don't let them build up. Be realistic and avoid situations that may trigger a relapse. These are the kind of things that you'll need to discuss with your therapist because like every kind of inner growth, they take time to understand and implement. An illness is a serious thing, so it's easy to forget that part of the treatment is having fun. Many people with manic depressive illness feel shameful for having the disease and they feel they're not worthy of genuine happiness. You know, recent research has discovered that laughing promotes overall health by causing positive changes in metabolism and brain chemistry. So enjoy yourself. Doctor's orders. I have really wonderful support system. I have a neighbor that walks with me four days a week, two miles a night, because she knows that if I don't walk, that there's a tendency I'm going to go home and get real tired. And getting really tired feeds on, on everything. For me, it's bad. I exercise, um, try to eat right, stay away from drugs and alcohol, um, keep a well-balanced 
life in terms of having friends and contact with my family. The medicine that I have, periodic visits to the doctor, blood tests, uh, help uh, from associations to which I belong, uh, the support of spouse and family. I try not to isolate myself, um, try to make it to work every day, and you know, try to balance all the social, environmental, physical, mental aspects of my life. So I think it's really important to do the things almost as if you had a cholesterol problem, to do the stuff on a regular routine basis, because I really feel a difference when I'm being healthy. If you don't communicate with your doctor, they won't know what is going on with you. Um, even showing up at your doctor's office during a time of trouble when you may not even realize that you're going through trouble will allow them to be aware that you may need help. I have a friend at work who checks on me, just observes. Um, it's the same friend who called my doctor and said, uh, you know, you need to probe with, with Lori next time you talk to her because I don't think she's telling you everything because she told me. Um, you know, I think it's okay to be intrusive. The, the hard knocks or the good fortune, I can deal with that. That's what I call normal. Uh, that's what's out there for me. Uh, and that's great because that's not out there for me if I'm, you know, in the throes of this illness. Finally, reach out for support. There may be a local group available where you can share feelings and experiences with other people who have manic depression. Ask your doctor. They understand what you're going through. When people come to the support groups for the first time, I mean, I get goosebumps when I see the people who are diagnosed and it's the first time they ever sat around a group of people in a group who understands what they're talking about. They, walk, they come into the group kind of a little shaky and nervous and they walk out hugging and everybody saying, my God, it's finally someone understands me. Basically, what it did was put a human face on something that before that had just been me and the textbooks. Those groups are important because they help people feel that they're not alone with the illness. And this is an exceptionally common illness. It occurs in millions of people in this country. There's nothing worse, though, than feeling like you're the only one in the world with this problem and uh, that there's uh, no one else who can understand what you've been through. Husbands and wives need a third party. They need somebody else to talk to. They need their friends. They need their, their psychiatrists, their psychologists. You have to have some place to go if you're going to make it. We can help with information, hope, and an introduction to a group in your area where you can receive the full benefit of what we call self-help. The organization does a wonderful job of uh, that initial immersion into what to do and how to do it and what are, what's out there for you. You know, life is not a television program. And it's not a script that never changes. Every life is a, a journey filled with valleys of sadness and peaks of high experience. People with manic depressive illness have explored more corners of their minds, experienced higher loves and deeper sadness than most. With treatment, these people function as professionals in every walk of life. There's hope for manic depression. It lies in medication, therapy, and love. But as we've seen, much of the hope lies within you. Let it out. Exchange the dark glasses and kaleidoscopes for clear, crisp lenses which let you see the present with all of its complex wonder and the future with all of its glorious possibilities. Some people call them disabilities. I call them gifts. If you can turn some of the gifts that we have into productive things, and I feel as though I have in my life in a lot of ways, and, and think about the things you can do as opposed to what you can't do, um, that, that's a big part of it. Now, I just got a great new job. Um, in the industry I've always wanted to work in, um, that I've worked in, um, I'm doing well. Um, everything that I lost I have back, including my marriage and my family. Um, and I have my mind back. I guess that's the bottom line. I mean, I have myself back. I know that this is something that we will face together always. 
At one time, I thought somebody was going to tell me that she's fixed, she's cured, you never have to worry about this again. But now I'm a little wiser, and I know that, you know, that this is an ongoing process, just like life, like people who don't have bipolar illness. You know, life evolves and things happen, not always good things. But I feel very confident that we can do this together, that we can face whatever comes. And uh, I don't worry about that anymore. Well, we've listened to all the professionals and heard all the interviews. Now, on a personal note, I, um, I just want to emphasize how important it is to get help. If you or a loved one seems to be acting strangely or a little moody for a prolonged period of time, please, go to a doctor, get medication, get help. Treatment is so simple and it really works. Do yourself a favor. There's no reason to suffer. Thanks. <laughs>